Okay. So I'll do that intro now and then I'll cut over to you. Yeah, perfect. Hey, welcome to the Pillow Talk podcast presented by Pillow Cube. This is our first episode, but we wanted to introduce ourselves to you. We're going to be interviewing celebrities, athletes, business leaders, and talking to them about what makes them tick and finding out a little bit more about their sleep and their sleep habits and yeah, just generally having a good time. So with us today on our first episode is Rose DeCoke. Rose is a supermodel. She is a investor, entrepreneur, and a super nice, genuine person. And so uh, Rose, welcome to the Pillow Talk podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I feel so honored that it's the first episode. Uh, we wanted to go big, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, I wanted to just dive right into some pillow talk and uh, let's do it. T- tell me, how, how much do you sleep a night? Um, that is different. Um, I like to aim for between eight to 10. I would say it's like 10 is like, I don't even know if I ever reach 10, but I would say eight is like eight to nine is like um, what I would like to sleep. I feel like usually I would sleep more like six, seven, eight. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's such a thing as beauty sleep? Does that really help? Um, I can definitely tell when I look tired. Um, but I believe it's kind of like genetics. So I don't know if it's really, you know, if <laughs> so it's there's really no hope, There's no sleeping. hope for me if I just start sleeping a ton more. Just sleeping more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so what, uh, what position do you normally sleep in? I am a stomach sleeper, which I know is like the worst, the worst thing you can do, but it just makes me feel so comfortable. Even like when I'm on a plane and stuff, I always try to like lay like on my stomach as much as possible. Um, It's like the worst position you could sleep in, but (laughs) whatever makes you feel, you know, at peace, we can live with, even though this is a side sleeper podcast, you know? (laughs) Um, I sleep a little bit. I sleep a little bit on my side, but I would say mainly, mainly, mainly stomach. So, are you like just like kind of like full out, like on the stomach? Are you like no? And yeah, no. I'm like I'm still like on my pillow like this with my with my head. So I guess even though on my stomach, my head is like you know. Yeah. So for those that are uh, just listening and not watching, it's kind of like she's dabbing and sleeping <laughs> on her arm. You know, permanent dab. Uh, I don't exactly. know what that is anymore. <laughs> that's, so, um, that's the move. What uh, what challenges have you had sleep wise? Have you know you had problems with different things or waking up in the night or? Yeah, so I've actually had a lot of sleep issues. Um, I would say my biggest thing is like when I get too hot, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like not able to get back to sleep. So sleeping on the um, is it, is it called like the frozen fiber cube, right? Yeah, the ice cube. Pillow, the ice yeah. cube. Yes, that's, that's my favorite. Uh, that honestly has helped a lot with for me because it's like, it's so cold that every time, you know, you, well, it stays cold also, but, you know, I'll switch to a different position and it's like ice all over. So yeah. that has helped a lot. Um, and then another thing I really like to do is I drink this tea. It's called Tulsi tea. It's like holy basil. Mm-hmm. Um, and that has helped me a lot too with falling asleep and staying asleep. And then I take like a bunch of supplements like magnesium. And like, I don't know. My friend makes like a really good passion flower um, medicine. So, yeah. So you just have a little kind of glass of tea before sleep and yeah. wind down. Um, wind what other, down. Uh, what other things are part of your sleep routine? Um, your I, uh, get to bed routine. I like to do my skincare. I feel like it is like part of my routine where I feel like it, I know like the day is finished. You know, I get to like unwind and relax. Uh, I so make some describe that in a little more detail. Like what, what, what does it mean to do your skincare? Because I don't know what that means. To me, that's just water on the face. You know, do like I put a little water on there? Right must be must be nice. Um, I will use like an oil cleanser to take up like my sunscreen or if I'm wearing makeup, and then I'll use like a foaming or not really a foaming cleanser. I 
it's more like a milky cleanser and really like massage the face, wash, you know, wash the remains of the oil off. Then I'll use like a toner, which is kind of the works as like an exfoliator slash like you kind of press it into the skin. Uh, then I'll do like some sort of serums, a moisturizer, maybe a face oil to feel very fancy. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I like to do. I also, I really like to take a bath before I go to sleep, but that's like a luxury that, you know, I, I can't do that every night. It's a little bit excessive. Um, and, um, yeah. And also I'm a, I'm a big reader, so I always read and I usually like fall asleep with my, my Kindle. I have a Kindle and I like fall asleep on my side and like the Kindle I'll wake up in the morning and the Kindle is like off the bed and I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I fell, I did it again. I fell asleep and the Kindle like, you know, just flies off the bed. But um, so yeah, I that's always, usually when I fall asleep. I always throw in a AirPod. I do a little oh, book nice. on tape. And so that's kind of my sleep nice. routine. I always fall asleep to my book and I have to put my sleep timer on. And mm. otherwise I finish a book at night without even knowing it. So <laughs> do, you, do you have, um, do you have a specific book that you listen to on repeat or, or you change it up? No, I change it up. So I'll, I'll do some podcasts or I'll just kind of do whatever I'm listening to. I don't know if I told you, I'm, I've been listening a lot to the book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. And that's kind of a like really meta to be like listening to how to sleep while I'm sleeping, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. No, I'm asking so. because my boyfriend, he, he loves um, listening to audiobooks too. He'll like put them in when he's sleeping also, but he'll just like listen to the same book on repeat. Like I got him this book called Power of Now. Um, and he just, for months and months and months, he just like listens to it on repeat. Well, he probably knows it really well after a while. He's, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's also like the guy, he's like Edgar Tolle, he's like a German uh, German guy and his voice is very meditative. So it's like, I think it's like a nice, you know, a good thing to listen to. Yeah. Um, so do you nap very much? No, I wish I could. Yeah, I'm not a big napper too, but I, uh, I just moved a, a bed into my office. <laughs> oh awesome that's and good I was like hey i work at a pillow company maybe i should uh have a bed in here just to yeah. try it out you know so i actually gonna... i actually love to work from bed i know it's like it's not you know don't try this at home but i just love like just in bed in my computer doing emails and like the best yeah. so uh you're from the netherlands how is that a house in the Netherlands different than the U.S.? Um, it's really, really different. Um, I think it Netherlands probably kind of say, similar to all the other European company uh, countries, where you know we have great healthcare, education is free, like a lot of those things. Where coming to the U.S., it was kind of a shock to me that you know things are not really in place here um mentality wise the u.s has much more possibilities um and i think you're able to like really you know create a create a new path for yourself and do things mm -hmm. like extraordinary you know whereas in europe people are much more like oh like you know did you go to university or, oh, did you, you know, did you do a specific, a specific um, education for, you know, requiring a certain job? Whereas like the U.S., I feel like people are much more open to giving a chance to people who are like dedicated and hardworking and, you know, trying to do mm -hmm. new things. So. so the American dream is still alive is what you're saying, huh? I think so. I think so too. Uh, that's one of the things I love I'm about America. It. You can you can start at the bottom and you can be anything you want, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, what uh, what brought you to the U.S.? Uh, what brought me here? Mm -hmm. So I when I finished high school, um, I got I was planning on going to University of Amsterdam and do economics and business, and I got scouted uh, by someone else, another Dutch. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. 
里叫什么？那里叫。He's inside. Ah,、uh, I thought Harley、uh, was going to join us on the podcast for a minute. Um, and um, I got scouted. So let's start me, back with that. We'll kind of edit through that a little bit, but yeah.、Um, yeah. So yeah, I was when I when I was、uh, when I was in my last year of high school,、um, I was planning on going to University of Amsterdam, going to do study business and economics because、um, that was what I was most passionate about. And、um, I got scouted、uh, and introduced to a New York New York agency. So they were very excited. They wanted to sign me right away. We hopped on a Skype because there, you know, there wasn't there wasn't Zoom back then,、uh, or FaceTime. We went on Skype, and、uh, I remember so well. I called my mom and I was like, "Mom, you know, this New York agency, and they want to sign me, and they want me to come. Like, what should I do?" And she's like, "Okay, we can go in like your next your next、um, holiday break." We'll go to New York for a week, and you know, meet with everyone, and and see how it is. And、um, yeah, everything was great. And I was like, oh, maybe I should just do this as a gap year, and then you know, start it going really well. So then I'm still in my gap year. <laughs>、um, so so、how、yeah. old were you? You were you were like eighteen. I was eighteen. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. And、yeah. then, did you when you stayed over here? Did you come over by yourself or? So my mom came with me、uh, the first couple of times,、um, just to kind of make sure that I felt comfortable and and you know everything was okay. And then、um, yeah, I was pretty much by myself. Yeah, kind of scary. Yeah, I think we were so young. Honestly, like when I think back to it, I'm like, wow, I don't know how I did that. But when you're so young, I feel like you just. Just go for it. You go for it. You just you want to be you want to be independent so bad, right? You want to be like you know. I wouldn't say like move to a different continent. You want to like you know, <laughs> leave your parents' house and you want to like you know explore and like do all these fun things. So, so like I'm yeah, a big kid now. Exactly. I'm gonna move to America.、Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been it's been a lot of fun. So that's cool. So what did you like the most about modeling? So modeling, I think, is great for、um, traveling, seeing a lot of the world,、um, meeting a lot of different people. I think I've learned so much throughout the years from all the different people that I've met, and like, you know, so many interesting stories and and how people are are involved in different things.、Um, so I would say those. Two things are my favorite, and of course, being financially independent at a young age, like that's、mm-hmm. you know, that's the money. The money is one of the best things. Yeah. <laughs>、um, is it weird having people look at you all the time? I'd be like, everyone's around me, just looking at me and staring at me. I, I, a、like、little bit,、adjustment? yeah, a little bit. But I think you kind of learn to kind of set yourself apart from like you know, people objectifying you. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of, I don't know, like seeing yourself, like it's like you know, there's like Rose the model, and then there's like Rose me as a person.、So. Yeah, how do you like? Can I mean break out of that shell of like, hey, I'm not just some dumb pretty girl, but like I have a real personality and these capabilities, and I'm strong. You know, how do you? Yeah, I think I think when I first started modeling, like people weren't very interested in to hear like you know what your story was or what your personality is like. Like they just wanted to have a pretty face. But I think now more and more people really want to see like how your you know what else are you doing? What are your interests? Like you know what's your personality? Like what do you care about? Like are you a nice person? People start to care more about. You know, different qualities. So that's a big plus, I think. Yeah,、really. big plus that they want to work with a person and not just like a a body. Yeah. You know, no. Or a face,、exactly. or yeah. Um. Anything else that you've like not liked about modeling or stuff? You're like, man, I hate that. You know? Yeah, I would say 
just what you were saying, like, right, like, kind of being like that objectifying. Um, I feel like sometimes people would see or would, would think that because you're a model, like, you don't have any flaws or you don't, you know, make any mistakes, like, kind of yeah. like that having like that mold of like being perfect all the time um which you know at the end of the day everyone is human so am i um, so you're not perfect is what you're telling me <laughs> i'm not okay looks can be deceiving sometimes but um <laughs> so throughout your career what have been like some of the most challenging points things that you've struggled or like dealt with you know um, I would say being away from my family, being away from friends, you're alone a lot of the times, which it's actually funny, like now when I don't get enough alone time, I like wish I had more alone time. Um, but I think when you're younger, you're not very like used to, to being by yourself so much and like, you know, sleeping in, in like different countries that you don't know anyone, you're like, you know, all alone in like a hotel room. Um, so I would say that's definitely something that's tough. Um, also another thing, uh, which I, I feel like in the pandemic, um, I really found out like how it is to have a routine and to have like, you know, being able to kind of have like a life outside of that like last minute culture of like, you know, we have a, you have a job in two days in Australia, like, you know, you hop on a plane tomorrow like stuff like that where it's like and you're like okay you think you're you're flying back to New York to your home and then it's like oh no actually never mind you're going to Sweden oh no never mind you're going to Peru oh no never you know it's like it's mm -hmm. everything is so last minute I remember so well, one time I flew home it's like one day before Christmas and I was so excited to spend Christmas with my family and like being home for holidays and then you know it was like oh can you please fly to LA for you know this job it's really important it's a lot of money like please 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 and then you're like oh but like you know you always kind of have to put your work first mm -hmm. especially in the beginning because if you're not willing to make that commitment there's like you know a hundred other girls that will take the job so then you're like okay sure so there you know there I went like one day before for Christmas like you know flying to LA to do a job mm -hmm. like I think I like just made it time back in time for like Christmas dinner so yeah that's tough because you kind of feel like you have to say yes to every job but yeah. sometimes health-wise you probably need to say no you know totally yeah um with the loneliness how did you get through that like how did you like kind of find peace or comfort or or whatever yeah, I think, I think just kind of pushing myself to like, cause I would, you know, travel to a country and I would be like, okay, you know, there's so many amazing things I can see here. There's so many amazing things I can do here. So just kind of like taking yourself out and like doing things you would usually do with friends, like going to a restaurant or, or. Um, you know, going to the movies or going to a museum, like, like those are things because I feel like it would be such a waste to not do those things when you have the opportunity. So I feel like I would, would just start doing things more and more by myself. And then, you know, after a couple of times, you just feel really comfortable. Mm -hmm. And now I actually prefer it because now I'm like, when I'm by myself, you know, if I want to go somewhere else, I can go somewhere. I like, there's no one I have to check with, you know, what to do. If I want to leave, I can leave. If I want to, you know, Mm -hmm. change my plans it's like you know but yeah so how do you become a great model like what is your craft like are you just born being a great model or do you have to like work on it um i think it has to do a lot with your agents finding like a good agency and finding good agents that believe in you and that push for you um because there's only so much that you can do for yourself you can you know make sure that you're in good shape you can make sure that you know how to pose and you feel comfortable in front of the camera um and i feel like those are kind of you know the two main things that you can work on for yourself but everything else is is kind of up to you know agent finding new jobs yeah, exactly but also and also like people those, love you and 
totally. But also like, you know, one day it could be, you know, people love blonde models. Then the next day it's like, oh, blonde is out. We only want brunette. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's very, you know, again, you have to kind of separate yourself from that model because otherwise you just take things very personal um, that might have nothing to do with you. So did you get rejected a lot as a model? Yeah. I mean, do you feel that personally? Like, hey, they don't want me. They don't think I'm pretty enough. They Like, how do you? Uh... I think definitely in the beginning, I would I would be upset sometimes about, you know, I would, be, I would get very excited about things. And I think now I just realized like to not really get excited. You just kind of. You just know, never be happy. It happens, it happens. <laughs> No, of course you're happy when it when it does happen, but it's like, you know, you can't be like upset with yourself or like disappointed. But then again, like it, it takes practice, you know, like if you go through it enough times, you kind of start realizing like, okay, well, I can't put my hope on this because if it doesn't happen, I'm just going to feel, you know, so disappointed. So mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think has made you uh, successful as a model? Like, what what are the things that you've done that, you know, made you a, a star? A good question. <laughs> Let's call my agent. Um, Your skincare routine, you know, big part. My skincare routine. Uh, uh, I, I have actually... been to dinner with Rose, and she didn't eat any bread while we were there. Everyone else was eating bread except for her. We didn't uh, eat any bread? No, yeah, we went to uh, Joe's. She did have some key lime pie. I witnessed it. Mm, yeah, I mean, I think just making sure that you're in good shape, right? Which I definitely mm -hmm. feel like I've had my struggles with. Because when you're young, you like, you know, your body's changing so much and you're trying to figure out like what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And then you get into this cycle, at least for me, and I feel like a lot of you know, models that I know have the same issue where like you get into the cycle of like, you know, over exercising and like restricting yourself from eating things. And, you know, it's definitely tough. Um, it's definitely tough. But again, it's just something you kind of, you know, have to work through and um, trial and error. So, yeah. I've seen you kind of post a little bit before about self-care and about just like making sure that you're taking care of your yourself, not just physically, but kind of like mentally, like what, yeah. what do you do there? What, what's your uh, routine or plan for yourself there? Yeah. So, um, I love therapy. Mm -hmm. I am a big believer of being in therapy. Um, I love my therapist. Um, and then, you know, which, which is really helpful to kind of have like a third perspective on things because sometimes you're so stuck in your ways of thinking about things that having a third or a second for a third person, a second person, whatever, um, come in um, and kind of having that, you know, giving you an extra view and kind of helping you work through things that you're struggling with. Um, and then besides that, like, you know, every day I would say I meditate every morning when I wake up, which is mm -hmm. very helpful. Um, I journal, like I do like the little uh, five minute journal. I think I'm sure you've, you've probably seen it. Yeah, yeah. The little thing where you, you know, you say what you're grateful for. Um, you say what you're going to do to, to have, you know, to kind of have like a, a good productive, great day. Um, and then you do the same at night. So I really like that. Um, making sure you're, you're, you feed yourself, like you eat proper healthy foods to make you feel good. Um, taking supplements has really helped me. Uh, exercising. Yeah. You know, I love a good soul cycle class. It makes me so happy. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of those things are like, even like going for a walk and like listening to like a positive podcast or, you know, obviously, you know, not everyone has this luxury, but I wake up so excited every morning just to take my dog for a walk mm -hmm. and like going to the beach and like, you know, having like sunshine, and, oh, it's like the best. Yeah. I, I love what you said about your journal. Cause I, I think 
we get so busy in life that we forget to write and take a little time to remember. I do that all the time. I like journal. My wife actually started making me journal every Sunday. <laughs> it's like, hey, here's That's your so journal. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you have to write this stuff down. And the yeah. reflection on gratitude and just realizing, oh my gosh, look at all the great things that I have. And I'm so blessed. Then it's a little harder to think about, oh, I need this. I need that. I don't have this. 100%. Yeah. So my boyfriend actually started a, um, a platform called What Day Is It? And you, and it's like a, basically like a platform where you post every day um, what you're grateful for. And usually mm. how we do it is like, you know, the first of the that month, we'll post one thing. But then on the 30th of the month, we'll post 30 things. Mm -hmm. And you start really to like realize like how challenging it is to come up with 30 things that you're grateful for, because also like, you know, you can't say every day the same thing. So it's yeah. like, you come up with new things. And you also, the thing that's amazing too, is like, I read other people, their messages, which that makes me like, oh yeah, I didn't even think of that. Of course, I'm grateful for delivery people, or I'm grateful for just so many like random things, right? That you just take for granted because there's so much we take for granted um to feel newly grateful for things so yeah that's awesome uh yeah. i wanted to ask you a couple questions about um your business activities like what, what kind of entrepreneurial stuff what investments are you have you done like you know what, you know show us that uh that powerful smart strong side of rose you know yeah so um i i have been invested um in a bunch of different companies mostly consumer uh i've invested in quip which is a great toothbrush company then luan uh makes amazing ice cream uh thursday boots um clean cold which obviously you guys are friends with yeah um, we're, we're friends with the clean cold guys yep um i'm thinking what else i, I missed um, I mean, there's like so many different ones and then I co-invest with uh, different funds. Uh, I just recently invested in a uh, company called Wellset, which I'm very excited about because it's kind of like an on-demand uh, for classes for um, everything that has to do with wellness and, and mental health and well-being. So I'm very excited about that. Um, so yeah. And then awesome. I don't know if I can say it yet if I'm investing in, in pillow cube but oh yeah we want you to say it tell tell the world shout it from the rooftop <laughs> well i'm also right. investing in pillow cube so you're yeah. your first yeah yeah we uh we're so excited to uh have you as part of the team and the thing yeah, i love most too. about working with you is you know you just believe in the product and you know really uh our, our dedicated i actually just had somebody this morning send me a dm on instagram and be like rose just told me about the pillow cube and said i have to have one so <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah um yeah so i am sending me something new out it's a uh, mattress protector Ooh. which you know i think might be like the most boring sleep product <laughs> but honestly don't even because when i just first got my when i first got my puppy He's almost two now, so luckily we don't have this issue anymore. But when I first got my puppy, every night, right before we were going to sleep, he would pee on the bed. Yeah. So um, <laughs> topper is pee. Don't sleep so, on it. So we've got the topper, but this topper is special because, you know, those same cooling fibers that you're talking oh. about with the uh, ice cube pillow, the entire Have mattress it. topper is going to be made of that. And so it will be... Uh, help that that hot sleep disappear a little bit so you can roll over you can get it where it's ice cold so i've been uh testing it out yeah and it's uh it's been a game changer so excited excited for you to try it out so yeah, um, me too. yeah anything that you want to plug or or tell people about that you're doing um come um, excited you can tell us about this macaroni and cheese ice cream if you want Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Ben Lewin did a, a collab with um, Kraft. We made this mac and cheese ice cream, which 
is very interesting tasting. I don't even feel like it tastes like the actual mac and cheese. It's more like a sweet and salty, but it's really, yeah. really yummy. Did you get I to had, try it yet? I haven't tried it. I should order some. I have to send you some. That. Yeah. That'd be fun. Listen. Yeah. yeah, I I tried an ice cream the other day that was like turkey and cranberry or something, and stuffing. <laughs> How was that? Uh, it was <laughs> way better, <laughs> way better than I thought it was gonna be. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really sound too appealing, but I did go with a different decision for my total cone, you know. But I had a little, I had yeah. a little sample scoop. Uh huh. So, yeah, that's it was all right. Yeah, that's so, so cool. Well, cool. thanks for uh, joining us for the podcast. Uh, yeah, thanks so, for having me. It's so fun. Great to learn a little bit more about what your success. And uh, you know, if I've learned anything from you, it's just like keep going, be positive, be grateful, and uh, you know, good things will come your way. And so thanks for sharing that, all that with you, with us. And uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see you. Awesome. Great. Okay. I'm going to turn that off. Well, thanks for uh, being my uh, test fun. dummy. <laughs>